Cool. All right. <laughs> thanks everyone for coming and uh, thanks so much for B-Slides and all of the sponsors for having me and for putting on such an amazing event. Um, my name's Bex Neithert. I work in the Digital Forensics and Incident Response team at Paraflare and I've also been one of the chapter leads at the Australian Women in Security Network um, Perth chapter for a, a number of years. I don't really like talking about myself too much, so we'll carry on. Um, oh, actually, there is a very important definition there and hopefully it doesn't disappear <laughs> off the stream. Um, I'm totally not stalking a cyber criminal and I completely lied when I said this is about the digital transformation of stuff because, you know, kind of didn't want a title that made me sound like a complete weirdo. Um, <laughs> um, so I came across a term called Spurring, which still kind of sounds kind of creepy, uh, <laughs> but it's about um, you know tracking animals or people by essentially the shit that they leave behind, and uh, <laughs> I thought that was that was kind of fitting. Um, <laughs> move on, move on. There we go. Cool. So what am I doing? Um, so originally, kind of started out. Um, this project uh, because we had a, um, you know, a client came to us with a phishing incident. They had multiple uh, credentials compromised. Uh, you don't actually see many companies investigate, you know, simple phishing incidents, which is a bit of a shame because often, you know, we're using kind of outdated playbooks to respond to phishing incidents and we don't fully understand um, you know, the scale and, and the impact of them. Um, so it was quite good, you know, we came in, no money was lost, you know, looked at what data was pot potentially taken. Um, but it's uh, through the information sharing that's been ongoing through the security community, and particularly, and I always bring him up because he's so amazing, um, Daniel McNamara at Telstra, um, if you're in the uh, JCSC Slack and look in the manual IOC um, channel, you just see him pumping in phishing links just constantly. And uh, if you can continue monitoring them, you'll see patterns in certain kind of, I guess, phishing operators. And through that, you can link certain phishing incidents to a cluster. Um, of activity, whether that's a particular phishing kit, an actor or a group of actors. Um, so through that, I was able to identify for this client, you know, the kind of likely individuals involved and, uh, you know, the, the types of things that they would do as a part of an attack. Uh, they asked me to dig a little bit deeper, which is pretty cool. They're like, well, you know, what do they want and, you know, um, so I did a bit of digging and, um, yeah, found more than I was kind of expecting. So I cut my teeth in uh, digital forensics at BDO, which is traditionally an accounting firm. I was in the forensic accounting team. I was like, I totally know accounting, you should hire me. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, the advert was kind of vaguely worded and they said, you know, assist with digital forensic stuff. And I'm like, I can do that. Um, they want an accounting degree or, you know, similar. Well, I don't know, Bachelor of Counterterrorism, Security and Intelligence, that's totally related to accounting. Um, <laughs> they took me on, which was awesome. Um, so I got, uh, uh, exposed to fraud investigations and got involved in forensic accounting and um, one of the partners there said I was a closet accountant and I think I slightly agree with her because I have really enjoyed looking at the financial aspects um, of this particular actor. Um, so yeah, um, I do kind of miss that a bit. Um, so the information that I have found, I have been sharing with law enforcement. Um, if I identify victims, I do notify them, uh, do share certain things with industry within a kind of a limited capacity. Um, given that 
there's a high likelihood that uh, some law enforcement action will take place. I'm having to be quite reserved in the information that I do present. Um, and if there's anyone smart enough to put two and two together, please don't go on dox them <laughs> online because, um, yeah, that doesn't help. Um, but yeah. So, um, a part of also with speaking to law enforcement, um, they're like, well, can you quantify the harm of these fishing incidents? And I'm like, well, how do you do that exactly? Um, you can only really measure what you can see. Not many people talk about how fishing impacts them. It's underreported. Global scale, um, you know, it, crime is somewhat secretive in nature. Um, but, you know, what we do have is, um, a, you know, essentially a fishing as a service operator who sells fishing templates and also offers essentially a managed fishing um, service. And so we can see from the products and services that he sells, the, the types of, I guess, um, victims that, you know, might be involved in, in particular fishing incidents and, and where that may lead. And so, as you can see from the list here, and it's not exhaustive, it covers actually quite a broad range of categories. So it goes from, um, you know, trying to get company credentials, which could lead to ransomware, business email compromise, whatever, um, to dating sites, which goes on to uh, romance scams, uh, property type stuff. So um, that's also, I guess, business email compromise related where be trying to uh, divert uh, really large transactions. So um, property settlements and, and things like that. So yeah, potentially quite devastating, but how do you actually link certain incidents to a certain phishing email when nobody talks about it. So you can certainly look at crime statistics and how much it costs the economy and all the rest. Those numbers are shit. I really hate um, security statistics um, <laughs> 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 because, you know, I think some people, I mean, you don't have visibility over all of the victims. Um, then you've also got people that have ulterior motives and yeah, I don't know, it just, it annoys me. <sighs> Come on. Cool. So, uh, we would think that, you know, criminals doing crimesy things would not want to make it completely obvious what they're doing and who they are and, you know, because you know, police bashing down your door at four o'clock in the morning isn't pleasant. Um, but just as I kind of wanted to say, I'm totally not a stalker because that sounds like a really bad thing, but I'm stalking a criminal, so that makes it okay. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got this moral justification for this <laughs> totally, you know, probably abnormal behaviour that I'm undertaking. I'm, I'm not lying in bed on my phone and going through, you know, someone's personal life. Um, but criminals have a similar approach to their career. Um, you know, they have moral justifications for what they do and so they don't necessarily see what they're doing as terribly bad. Um, it might actually be celebrated within their community um, or they have a perception that they won't get caught. Um, and you will see criminals using lots of different types of justifications for why what they're doing isn't a bad thing. Um, and the particular actor that I've been tracking uh, recently made a post on a religious forum and said, is what I'm doing a sin if the victims of my customers are non-believers? <laughs> and um, so 
all these people chimed in and they said, yes, it's still a sin, it's still illegal, you shouldn't do this, right? But all it takes is some person to say, no, that's totally justified, all non-believers you know, are deserving of, of this and he can feel comfortable in himself that totally cool man. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, these people then suggested that maybe he look at a legitimate job in cybersecurity. <laughs> <laughs> And we know that that's worked for select few people, um, but I don't know if I would hire this person. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, you'd be surprised just what you can find on, on social media, um, Facebook. There's public groups dedicated to scamming. So type in scammers professional, something will come up. Um, type in scam pages, stuff will come up. Type in uh, SMTP inboxes or inboxing, stuff will come up. Um, you can find it. Um, so this guy uses his real name. <laughs> um, including in some of the email addresses he's used to uh, register a lot of domain names. His wife is obsessive um, on Facebook. It's multiple times a day posting pictures of food and the new car that they've bought and, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, so, pretty much everything I've learned about this guy um, is from social media and other stuff is from uh, you know, hack forums where quite often the most juicy information comes from where one criminal has been scammed by him and is complaining about him or he's been scammed by another criminal and so he's complaining about them and they post screenshots. <laughs> and so there's screenshots of, of Bitcoin addresses. For some reason, he shared his uh, email and password with a criminal and took a screenshot of that. I, I haven't tested it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd say he probably reuses that one. Um, it's, it's his special one for RDP um, things. So yeah, still in use. Um, he also has developers who think that GitHub is a great place to host <laughs> the, um, the online website that he actually runs. Um, so, uh, man, it is just, just this never-ending kind of gold mine of stuff. <laughs> so he's been at fairly dodgy things probably <coughs> since... Mm, I don't know, I, I'd say probably since early teens, but um, I don't really have visibility going back that far. Um, I can see uh, he certainly started to get involved um, in illegal activity around about 2011, so defacing websites, planting web shelves, um, account compromises, experimenting uh, with botnets and, and all the rest. Um, it was around about 2015 that he started advertising services on online forums to um, essentially sell um, phishing templates and letters. Letters are essentially the email, um, so another way of kind of downgrading, the, you know, what um, is actually being done. Um, so he, he relied on forums quite a bit for that. Um, the Bitcoin address that he used between 2015 and 2018 remains steady, which, which you know, is fantastic because it's just all there. You don't have to put any effort in. Um, and I'll show a graph later. Um, 2018, he established his own e-commerce website. So openly advertising the sale 
of all of those fishing kits, um, fishing templates that I showed earlier. Um, he, I think, it, yeah, 2015 ish, he started a, a fairly um, kind of low fee, and that's increased five, yeah, five fold, up to five fold um, over um, this period, basically, which is, which is pretty decent. Um, he's the kind of guy that likes to contribute to the community. So, you know, if he wasn't involved in crime, you know, he'd probably be a top bloke. Um, <laughs> you know, he, he publishes tutorials on how to do things and, and helps in forums, answering questions, gives things away for free sometimes because he's such a generous guy. Um, <laughs> buys his wife lots of bling. Um, so spoiled. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he, his business has just picked up, and especially in the last year. And this is with the introduction of what I'd like to call his managed fishing services, because for a very large fee, <laughs> I mean, we're talking about $1,000 a month in a country where, you know, that's... <laughs> you know, someone's probably half a year wages. Um, he will deliver the phishing emails. Um, uh, basically when uh, accounts are compromised and particularly business accounts, then we'll log in and start using the compromised accounts within the business to spray out more phishing emails within the organization, compromising more and more. It's just a fan out effect. Um, and then actually use uh, the infrastructure of victims to host phishing lures. So if you've ever seen PDF hosted in some random company's OneDrive with a link to a phishing site, they've probably been compromised, you know, by the same um, group. I mean, heaps of them, heaps of them do it. But uh, yeah, so he he will offer that service and. Um, you know, he'll, he'll give you the cred logs at the end of the week and, you know, by then I'd say that he's probably done what he wants to do with these logs that are intended for the customer. But, um, you know, he's still having such a great service. Um, <laughs> um, uh, so that, that, that's been a, a huge uh, revenue generator. And uh, he's also, he's hired some people uh, which is pretty cool, he's paying them a wage. Um, so, you know, jobs for mates. Um, <laughs> and and he's, he's got automation happening, you know. It's like a phishing site goes down because someone's reported as malicious, customer can log into the portal, push a button, magic. New phishing site up for them. Um, so I estimate that there's more than 100 fishing sites. Seriously, we're up to five minutes. I thought I might ramble on a bit. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it makes a lot of money, 98K in 60 days. And people are saying maybe you should go get a legit job. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know about that, man. <laughs> um, but majority of the income is coming through that ma managed fishing service and the VIP um, fishing service, which is up the top, that is where customers can choose to target specific um, lists of um, email addresses, essentially. Lots of Bitcoin. Um, I'm still kind of collecting. I can only track as much as I can find. Um, but all of this information has come from, well, uh, there was a hundred and something page PDF document with invoices for web design and hosting um, back in 2019-2020 and also uh, a more recent kind of list of customers and the things that they bought. And so uh, he kindly put the transaction ID number for um, quite a lot of these customers, so I was then able to uh, find their Bitcoin um, 
addresses associated with it. Uh, one of the earlier ones, if people want to take a photo quickly, just if you want to go down a rabbit hole, um, this, was, this was one of the um, uh, change addresses uh, for a Bitcoin payment that was made to him associated with uh, the shadow brokers, apparently. Um, so once everyone's got a photo, I'll move on, see what we can find around there. At least this won't come back to him. So one of the things that really frustrated me was that <laughs> I had a photograph of his license and domain names were registered in his name with his address. I was like, cool, I know where this guy lives. Shit, he's building a new home. Where is he going? Um, then we have Google. So his mate that helped build the house, left a five-star review. <laughs> <laughs> he's uploaded photos of his house. Um, he's called the place after his son. <laughs> um, and it looks like this heavily fortified kind of bikey clubhouse, except it has this mule at the front. <laughs> So this is my artist's, because <laughs> I'm not going to show the actual house, because you know how that goes. Um, so, so last night I was like, okay, I have to show you something to kind of give an indication of what it looks like. Yeah, it, totally no crime here. There's, you know, this cartoon mural out the front, legit innocent. Yeah, cool. And that's my final slide. I'm not finishing on the thank you one. <laughs> oh, thanks, Bex. Um, is there any questions? We do have a portal microphone now for those people listening online. So if anyone has a question, dolls. Yeah. Are we going to online first or? Uh, we will go in person, yeah. Yes, so thankfully, thankfully we have AFP liaison officers over there. Um, so very good chance, it's just that international law enforcement agency has very limited resources, um, which is a shame, but hopefully we'll get there. Um, how did you get the initial link to his wife's Facebook account? <laughs> Be <laughs> because it's, he's listed as married to her on his Facebook account. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's just... <laughs> uh, Christine, Luke. Yeah, really, really good uh, question there. Uh, from the feedback I've received, there's definitely enough to get him. Um, it's just that I'm weird and I like to do this and so I keep on doing this. And I don't know how long you know, it's going to take for them to um, catch them. And so part of actually what I'm doing now is looking at the customers. So I've been able to identify some of the customers as well. So I'm just going to keep filling in my time doing strange things. But really good question. Um, you know, what's the point of burning resources if you've got enough, but I'm doing it for fun, so, yeah. Up the back. Um, have you felt any moral conflict about taking this guy down? Like, he's got staff, like, Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's got staff, he's got kids, he's also got a new puppy. <laughs> you know, like... Dude, I saw the fluffy thing. I was like, oh man, you know. <laughs> Need to donate some dog biscuits later. <laughs> All right, we probably have time for one more question. It's up the front here, Dolls. So you said you posted on his Facebook about his wife's Facebook. How did you find his Facebook? Did you put on a hacking forum? 
Uh, well, he used his Facebook to talk about, like, he's, he's a part of a public hacking group on Facebook. Um, his, he uses his real name on Facebook. He uses his real name um, on domain registrations and subdomains of some of his illicit websites. Like, he's just fully... Uh, through like digging through all of the related domains on his infrastructure, like he used a you know virtual private server, and he he also screenshotted. Well, sorry, took a photo of his screen with the IP address as well, which was pretty fab. Did you have a Bitcoin address? No, no, I found the Bitcoin address uh, just by digging into him, and then found a complaint which included a discussion on ICQ about the transferring of funds to purchase things and... Who was your first client to this person? Like, initially, how did you identify this particular person? Who was your first Just through looking at, uh, you know, who was linked to the phishing infrastructure, uh, okay. essentially. So, yeah, it just... You kind of... You just follow things and then eventually you'll come to something where you go... Ah, uh, yeah, got it. And um, then you, you just use various points to then increase your level of confidence in what you found and whether that actually makes sense and it, it is solid, absolutely solid. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Bex. Uh, now it's donuts time again. We're going to eat them outside this time. So uh, please enjoy. <laughs> um, hello, friends.